Hey, what's up everybody? This is going to be the Dragon Gate USA slash Evolve video. So you can post your top five favorite Gabe Sapolsky matches since he uh, departed from Ring of Honor in the comment section. So, uh, yes, yeah, some of you guys might know, I uh, want to compile these mega you know, lists from some of the best promotions of all time, all the biggest promotions. You know, I just think um, when people participate and more involved, uh, I just think it makes the list more official and more legit rather than just having some guy post his own random list. So uh, just want to thank everybody, everybody for their uh, TNA list. The TNA video came out great. I thought the, uh, you know, the unbreakable triple threat match pretty much dominated it. Everybody, everybody pretty much voted that as their number one uh, TNA match of all time. But, you know, looking at the TNA list really kind of reminds you of just how amazing TNA was at certain points. And, it, and, and then uh, at the, and it also kind of just makes you feel bad about, you know, how much they kind of fell off. But, uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the TNA list, uh, definitely check it out. But for this video, I want to focus on Dragon Gate USA and Evolve. Um, just want to focus on the American indie part of it, not Dragon Gate from Japan. And, I, you know, I was kind of skeptical about doing this promotion. I just felt like it wasn't going to go over very well because not a lot of people still watch it. You know, the, the buzz over the last couple of years has really, has really died down. But uh, to refresh everybody's memory, I went through the archives, and there's a lot of reviews. I just, and you know, it's kind of, you know, it's the promotions, Dragon Gate USA and Evolve, it really hasn't been a complete failure because people have consistently reviewed and praised their shows for almost five years now. So, you know, it is what it is. So, if anyone needs help, you know, refreshing their memory of some of the best matches the promotions had in the comments section. Pretty much all the must-see matches that were at least four stars and above are in the comments section from 2009 all the way down to 2013, 2014, or whatever. So, so yeah, j j just some quick overall thoughts about um, Dragon Gate USA and Evolve. As, as most people know, the, the guy that got fired from Ring of Honor... The booker, Gabe Sapolsky, started Dragon Gate USA in uh, 2009. And, you know, I remember um, the next big thing. I'll just, I'll just call that his name. He, um, he, he actually was talking to me over the internet. He said, are you going to the Dragon Gate show? And I'm just like, what Dragon Gate show? He's like, this Dragon Gate car looks awesome. This is guaranteed to be the show of the year in, in Philadelphia. And I looked at the car and I was like, holy shit. I mean, it was pretty much Dragon Gate from Japan. It was just such an amazing card from top to bottom. And uh, the second show was even better with uh, Davey Richards versus Shingo and Brian Danielson versus uh, Naruki Doi. I mean, they, they just had such momentum and such a hot streak in the beginning. But, you know, it was, you know, looking back on it, there's just no way they could have continued that kind of momentum with that kind of star power. Um, and, like, what was the whole purpose of Dragon Gate USA? It was, was it the kind of. I don't know, for Gabe, it, it was just a way to kind of, a better way to introduce his new stars to the American Indies by having them kind of mix it up with some of the Japanese talent. I, I guess that's that's the way he was looking at it. I guess, you know, SEMA and, and the Dragon Gate office thought this was a great way for you know the, them to get exposure in the United States. Um so, you know, the, the relationship was pretty good. You know, I, I would say 2009, 2010, 2011. And, you know, I think the end of 2012 was when it really started to just run its course, really started to just, even in 2011, I would say. Well, I, w there was a time when Chikara's pay-per-view, the buzz for the high noon pay-per-view totally blew away the, the Dragon Gate USA buzz. But, um, you know, a, a lot of people had problems with, uh, you know, Gabe Sapolsky's talent, the guys he was bringing in. A lot of people just weren't connecting to them. You know, Johnny Gargano, Chuck Taylor. I don't even know if it was those guys, because I thought those guys had, have had phenomenal careers over the last five years. But, you know, overall, just a lot of people have said to me, you know, I just can't really get into the Gabe guys. So I think a lot of people have a negative, uh, you know, mind frame about some of the newer talent that Sapolsky was pushing. I, I think that's probably one of the problems. Um, you know, they, they weren't able to sustain the momentum, obviously. You know, it's, you know, slowly but surely, you saw less Dragon Gate talent coming. And it's at the point right now where you don't even have any Dragon Gate talent on the shows. I think the, the last WrestleMania weekend shows, nobody from Dragon Gate showed up. So I think that's a problem. And I think right now, 
they need to seriously consider about changing the name. Do you just change it to Evolve? Uh, but Evolve has such a negative, you know, aura attached to it. Because when you think of Evolve, you think of indie shows with not a lot of people coming or showing up. So, uh, so I don't know. I'd just like to see Sapolsky kind of start a new promotion from the ground up and just title it something else. Because, I don't know, the, the, the Dragon Gate partnership doesn't seem to be working right now. And if, if I was in the Dragon Gate office in Japan, I'd think about cutting ties with it completely. Because it, ju it just doesn't seem like it's worth it financially for those guys to come over here. And that's probably one of the reasons they stopped coming. It just wasn't, you know, worth it. Besides WrestleMania weekend, you know, the, the crowds have been dead and uh, depressing, you know, from, from what I've seen over the last couple of years. But, um... Now, the, the company has a lot they could be proud of, though. I mean, like, if you look through the reviews on YouTube, you know, you've, it's just a lot of um, a lot of buzz. You know, just a lot of... Um, I'm, I'm just talking about the last five years. There's been a lot of consistent reviews and, and praise for the promotion. It's, it's not like it's been dead, but... Uh, it's, I, I, just, I just think they, there's so much hype for the first couple months... That people were just kind of disappointed um, that we've just seen such weakness from them. You know, you you just would have expected more amazing shows that, than what they've given us. Um, th 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 to me, I think the biggest problem was because you know they had such potential. A lot of people thought they were going to surpass Ring of Honor at one point, but but to me, it's it's the business philosophy. I just think that's that was the biggest problem. I you know. Uh, at first, everything was 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 cool. I I think them having the delayed pay per views, the tape pay per views, and then you know uh, coming out with the DVD a month later, I thought that was a better business philosophy, and that that seemed to be working because there was less shows, and each and every show felt more special. You had better, you obviously, you had a lot more talent uh, at that time, but I I think the uh, the business philosophy. There's just so many things that just didn't work. Uh, the internet pay-per-views I thought were a, a failure. Uh, the quality just wasn't very good. Um, you know, people uh, obviously people are going to have problems with the uh, with the stream. Uh, on top of that, you have uh, triple shots. You have three internet pay-per-views. You don't know which one to order. Uh, I, th I thought I thought that was a problem. Then after they started doing that, they took a, a long ass time for them to start releasing DVDs. Um, you know, I, I you know I just saw ultim open the Ultimate Gate today. And, you know, it, I had to wait 13 months to see Shingo versus Gargano. So that's that's a long wait. You know, I, 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 I just think, you know, to be a successful promotion, you need to have multiple ways where people can watch your product. And when you limit it to just one thing, that's really not that great. You know, a lot, not a lot of people are going to want to invest time into it. And I understand DVDs are dying. And, you know, some people might even say DVDs are dead with professional wrestling. But, um... I don't know. I, I would disagree. I think for the American Indies, I, I still think DVDs are the best way uh, to view something to get the maximum experience uh, from the shows. Uh, also, um, you know, Evolve. Everyone thought the Evolve title would would would, would save things. Uh, the win loss record thing. Uh, it just seemed like no one was really kept track of that. You know, the, it would be so long, but. You know, when you would see one show and then see another show, there was such a gap that you would just forget about who had the best uh, wins and loss record. So I don't think that worked. When they brought the Evolve title in, the tournament flopped. And you know, does anyone even know who the Evolve champion is right now? Uh, I don't think. I don't know. I, I don't think so. Um, they also started. Um, a lot of people were just bitching from the start about who they were pushing as the champion. You know, the the the, the open the uh, Freedom Gate champion. Uh, was BB Hulk, and everyone had a problem with him winning it. And ever since then, it just that title just never seemed to have any credibility. Even right now, you have Johnny Gargano, as uh, he's been champion for almost three years since the end of 2011. I, I believe he's still the champion, if I'm not mistaken. And it just seems like that belt never really had any credibility, or like no one really cared about it. You know, with Dragon Gate, it just never felt like the promotion had any continuity and any any connection. You know, you were never really invested in any of the storylines. And it's just, you know, I always thought it was just tough with this core. It just it just never seemed to gel with me. Um, you know, the mixing Japanese guys up with the Gabe guys. And I, I just felt like no one was really ever invested, you know, in, in aside from just watching great wrestling. That's, that's really all they would give you. Um, and even right now with PWG, I, you know, you, you're, you're seeing... 
you're seeing so much Dragon Gate, you know, Gabe Sapolsky, you know, DG USA slash Evolve talent on the PWG shows. And, you know, it's it's shocking to me, but I think they've kind of hurt the, the PWG product. And it goes back to that dirty word, oversaturation. But I, I just feel like you're seeing the same matches over and over again, whether it be, you know, Ricochet, AR Fox, and Rich Swan versus the Unbreakable Machines or... You know, the, the Young Bucks versus Air Fox and Ricochet. It's like, it just feels like a blur. Like, if you were to ask me, name your, you know, top 10 PWG matches from 2013, I, I, I couldn't do it without really looking hard at it. It's not like ROH from 2007 where I could just list 20 matches off the top of my head. I can't. Because, you know, all, the, you know, it, all these PWG shows just feel the same. It just feels like they're trying to stack as much talent as possible. And then now you, you get to see Dragon Gate in PWG. So now when you get to see them, you know, the Gabe talent on their official shows, it just doesn't feel that important. Um, so I, that, that, that's been a problem right there. But um, but overall, even though the, the attendance has gotten lower, the buzz has gotten weaker, you know, still put on a lot of amazing shows. You know, I mean, you look, looking back on it, you know, you had the first two shows, which were amazing. The, the, the pay-per-view when Austin Aries wrestled Yamato, um, when his career was on the line, that Mercury Rising 2011, that was an amazing show. Shingo versus Gargano, fucking amazing match. That had a hot WrestleMania type of crowd. So, uh, you know, they do have a lot to be proud of. I wouldn't say it's been a complete disaster. It just hasn't, you know, I don't think it's panned out the way I think a lot of people expected it to. And then also you got a lot of guys leaving going to the WWE and just, you know... It's just it just hasn't really clicked for a lot of people, but uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know what you think about Dragon Gate USA and Evolve. How long? How much longer would they stay in business? How much longer are they going to be around to offer anything? There's actually an Evolve show tonight, I believe. Evolve 29. I think you have Uha Nation in the main event in a tag match. It does look like a kind of an underwhelming card, but uh, we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think. Take it easy.